Osiris. Yo, yo, yo. I am good to go. And I am also Karina Reichman here with another episode of Inappropriate Happiness. And I am joined, as always, to my right, that would be your left. That's what I would say if we were on stage. This is Mr. Isaac Sloan. How you doing, Cat? What's going on? Karina, I am just filled with joy and music <laughs> and uh, brimming with excitement about uh, talking about it with you. Dude, I mean, talk about my cup overfloweth. It's really fucked up, actually, because uh, for those who don't know, I mean... Uh, we've dubbed it the Jam Band Olympics, but, you know, Isaac and I, we've uh, we've done some very aggressive show going, and we are recording this on the ninth consecutive day of concerts that we have attended. Um, all of the Jam Band variety. <laughs> Actually, just two bands. Just two bands, uh, which is also, you know, I'm sure some people would think this is, uh, you know, a shocking fact of life, but for me... It's been it's been the best of times. It's really an incredible thing. I know we talked about it, you know, an episode or two ago, but like July, open air. It's been actually sweltering hot at <laughs> at a few of these as we've had a absolute monstrous heat wave here in the Northeast. Uh, you know, Hartford. We'll get into everything we've seen, but Hartford, Connecticut, on Sunday in the shed, quite literally ninety eight degrees. You know, at ten thirty p.m. It is a pretty difficult way, difficult way to enjoy a concert, you know, when you're uh, you're like, oh, my God, I might pass out. I really might pass out. But listen to this. So good. But I might pass out, you know. But otherwise, we have had a really wonderful time. Isaac, where do we even begin? Do we begin in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love where this all started? Like, what the hell? How are you feeling? Are your legs okay? My legs feel good. I actually feel really good. There's some way in which I feel very fueled by yeah. uh, everything that we've gotten up to and how well uh, the two bands, uh, Fish and Widespread Panic, that we've seen over these nine nights, uh, I guess nine, ninth will be tonight, uh, how well they're playing. And, and you know, I, w- when you say where do we begin, I, I go to, you know, sitting on the couch in the middle of lockdown watching these bands, you know, sort of stream shows uh, from their archive and thinking with you, hey, when it comes back, you know, we're, we're going to just embrace every moment of it. And, uh, Amen. you know, uh, yeah, Philly, the man, last Tuesday, uh, Dude, a, a week ago yesterday. We traveled down. That was the the, uh, the inception of our personal Jam Band Olympics. Um, I would go on the record to say that for everything that we've seen in the last, we'll, I'll call it eight shows because the ninth is tonight, right? Night one of the Man Center in Philadelphia was my favorite that I have seen musically of of everything if i were to uh you know put com- compare things in such a way i felt uh the second set here which we will dive into really did it for me i feel like it did it for just about everyone it was one of those bombastic moments of fish that like you just you're you're brimming with joy that they have concocted such a dynamic fun thing for us patrons here so uh you know again it is 98 degrees down there in philadelphia we're going for it it's unbelievable and they open the show with an acapella space oddity now that was the shit i really enjoyed that totally and then into martian monster which i i thought you know hey we have a kind of space theme going on Haley's comet was all about outer space. Space, baby. A we know it's little the place. foreshadowing of what was to come in the second set. Uh, I love a jammed out Haley's. This one was 17 minutes. Very dope. Very dope. Very dope. And then they closed the set with a ripping Walls of the Cave. Which I am a big fan of. It's uh, it's one of those slow burn tunes where at the end, you know, you're, you know, you strap yourself in, they ease you in. <laughs> Talk about the opposite of don't ease, don't ease. Literally ease me in, dude. It's uh, it's very, very cool. And uh, and yeah, we are talking, of course, for those who don't know, about the Tweezer Fest that blasted off in the second set. Isaac, you have this pulled up. What does this actually look like on paper? Because I just remember being enveloped. <laughs> so after a brief second set uh, opener with the song More, yeah, uh, yeah, the the band slammed into Tweezer, and I mean, off the bat, I really thought it was a great Tweezer, uh, you, you know, sort of a, a nice fifteen minute version of the tune that uh, segued into Cities, yeah, uh, talking Heads tune, uh, which I always love to get, and and don't remember the last time 
I heard it live. Big fan. Um, big big fan. fan. Back into Tweezer. Little uh, passing through, passing through. Yes. Uh, from from the Kasvat box set, uh, they sort of passed through the song. So in both content and form, they were passing through on their way to Isabella. Now the Tweezer Isabella. <sighs> storied. 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 <laughs> Auburn Hills, ninety seven. Everybody loves it. The Tweezabella show. <laughs> Um, but yes, this this was uh, you know not just nostalgia, folks. It was really uh, really a great uh, second set uh, with that, and and then Mercury and Piper, two thousand one, uh, you know, Damn. all kind of weaving in and out with Tweezer. You know, we've talked a lot, just the two of us, off the air about like. As we all know, sometimes these bands, right, it looks good on paper, but it's less good when you're there. And sometimes it looks mediocre on paper, but it's phenomenal when you're there. I think this is, in, uh, like, hearing that back, it sounds real good on paper. And let me tell you, it was great in person, too. No, yeah, it was well executed. Very they, much they so. Set, they set something really great up. I, you know, I don't know how much of that was sort of thought about uh, ahead of time and how much of it was off the cuff. Either way, they executed it brilliantly. And, yeah, it was just a, a great set. I, I find myself thinking about the kinds of textures that emerged in the improvisations uh, quite often from that set because it just, you know, enveloped the entire uh, space and, and everyone was, was uh, the energy, it was palpable. Big time. And they felt very much locked into something greater. In Carried that. off our feet. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, which was really great. And, you know, let's just talk about the art form for a half a second here before yeah, we go, yeah, you know, the, <laughs> the jam band art form is not easy because well for a million reasons but these guys you know you have 400 original tunes or whatever it is some absolute monstrosity of a number right you have a repertoire of between that and covers it's it's just for me a musician you know the idea that you're keeping all this in your head and keeping it fresh and rehearsing it behind the scenes and making it you know an experience for the fans that are you know a unique show every night it's an insurmountable, you know, it's unbelievable that these guys are able to pull that off, right? But with that comes, a, and especially with Fish, and we'll get into widespread panic very quickly, but with Fish, you know, I feel that it's interesting because they, they take such risks and they, you know, have, it's this sort of vibe of just like, you know, we're going to fuck around and find out, we're going to fuck around and find out, we're going to create something from nothing, something from nothing and build and build and build and build and build, which makes it wildly exciting when they strike upon something where it feels like the four of them found, you know, the key. They're locked in, they're doing it, it's amazing, you know, uh, but, which also sometimes they are searching and it doesn't quite land the way you know it could because you've seen the band 100 times, 200 times, 300 times, whatever it may be, you know? So it was really interesting to see sort of the parallel to me between Fish and Widespread Panic. Widespread Panic, a smaller catalog, correct, Isaac? Oh, yeah. A much smaller catalog. And um, it's more, to me, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I've seen Fish 123, four times, right? But I've seen Panic 10 times. They don't come up north very much, you know, whatever. And uh, and I'm a total fan and I love to see it. But it's interesting to see how the two bands within the same art form do things differently. And I thought it was really cool to see it juxtaposed amongst these last eight nights, you know, where we went fish, fish, panic, 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 fish, panic, fish, <laughs> and capping it off with another night of fish uh, here tonight at Jones Beach. But man, uh, you know, with panic, I find it's there's there's less margin for things to, you know, not congeal just because I feel like they have fewer things to pick from and things are maybe more ironed out in a certain regard as opposed to, you know, fish can reach these incredible heights and they're not afraid to try, you know, to like make something out of nothing, you know, and then sometimes they strike upon gold, you know, but it's kind of amazing to see Panic's sort of the way they constructed all this as just a very well ironed out machine night after night that ramped up, I would argue, you know, and yeah. Well, I also think they're a little bit discerning about when they decide to be 
uh, go out and be a little bit more experimental. Sure. And I don't know how much of that is, uh, you know, kind of conscious discernment. Yeah. And how much of that is part of the chemistry. Mm -hmm. But there are uh, certainly panic shows where I think what you're talking about is very true. They're, they they uh, are more ironed out and, um, you know, a little bit less about letting the music breathe and building something uh, from nothing. Sure. And other ones where I think... Uh, they do kind of decide to go in uh, a, a little bit deeper and take some of those risks where I think, as you're saying, Fish goes for that <laughs> at every turn. There's every a, turn. You know, a, a, a kind of desire to, to just sort of see what happens. Which is obviously what, you know, such a huge part of what keeps us going back for more as fans, you know? Oh, completely. And it's so fascinating and it's just, I mean, you know, we could, I was going to, I could sit here and go on and on and on about, you know, why we're so compelled by this and why we, you know, keep going back night after night, year after year to, to get more as could many, many, many of our listeners. I'm sure, you know, you understand what I'm talking about, but for the layman, you know, it's a really interesting thing, the two-set jam band. You go, it's an endeavor, you don't know what you're getting, it's a whole to-do. And I'm just saying that because tomorrow night I'm going to see 75 minutes of Maggie Rogers <laughs> performing three-minute-long pop tunes, and it's going to be a very different experience, you know? And that's like the majority of music today, I feel like, you know, is presented in a sort of one-set, distilled format. You know, and it's just really interesting. It'll be really interesting to juxtapose that after all of this jam bandery, you know. Well, I also think we're talking about bands that are uh, nearly 40 years in their careers. Right. And I think because of that, uh, the um, routes that they've decided to go in and the sort of choices that they've made around their careers become a little bit more apparent. And again, this isn't to say that they all sit around and think about this on a, you know, molecular level. Sure. I mean, perhaps they do, but... It, it is, uh, you know, for me, uh, with Panic, they do put out some new tunes, but Fish debuts new songs constantly. I mean, they can't sort of stop adding to this <laughs> repertoire, whereas Panic, I think, is a little bit more, uh, to me, it feels a little bit more like they're interested in sort of consecrating something about their catalog. Sure. And, you know, I, I've heard uh, people talk about their st studio albums becoming sort of like classic rock albums a little bit. Right. You know, right. in the sense that some of those songs have a, a kind of, um, I don't know if it's just a nostalgia factor, but they hold up in this kind of interesting way after so much time. Uh, whereas Fish, you know, we saw a second set last night where there was a bunch of new, new material. Certainly. And sort of in the last two shows I saw, including Hartford and Jones Beach Night One, right? Sort of an attempt to, you know, last night leaves, right? Was super jammed out. The time before, you know, A Wave of Hope, super jammed out. And um, yeah, it's sort of... And in the first set, Sigma Oasis, super jammed out, right? Very long version, very much, you know, I feel like there's a consecrated attempt at making something out of these new tunes and getting people on board with being like, oh my God, dude, the Sigma Oasis from Hartford, that shit is insane. Have you heard it? This because So things kind of become, you know, part of the fish repertoire in a way that like the fans will be able to sort of be like, oh, dude, like, any of these tunes, it's not like it's going to be just a three-minute flash in the pan. Like, these things are getting kind of indoctrinated into their set and could take off at a moment's notice, which makes it sort of exciting for us, I feel like. And it's, again, just a testament to the sort of absolute bombastic, creative overflowing that comes from fish you know that you whether or not you like it you know you're you're along for the ride you know fan or otherwise you're just like damn these guys cannot stop they're you know the halloween musical costumes the reinventing of the set and putting new stuff new stuff new stuff new stuff like it's it's really some a lot to admire and especially for me the musician who sees all of it, right? Including, I'm talking Maggie Rogers in the future. You know, I'm, I'm already, I'm super excited for that just because of the juxtaposition. And it's like, what do you, what do you do with your 75 minutes on stage, your two 75 minute sets on stage, your encore, all that, you know, whoever you're going to see, right? You're going to see Jimmy Buffett soon. What's he going to do? What, like, it's so interesting when you see a performer on the bandstand and they have to do something with their time. What is it? Well, yeah. I mean, you get something about 
it that is, uh, you know, so different than just the the tunes or so different than just the kinds of playing, but it's almost something about a kind of aura or affect or personality that comes through in a lot of those choices. Big time, big time, which you get from both the bands that we spent our last, you know, 10 days seeing or whatever. Which oh, is totally. Super interesting. And, you know, so lucky to be able to take part in that and, you know, not stray too far from home for us. You know, it's incredible. It is an incredible thing to be able to just absorb what these creatives are doing and who they are through their art form, you know? Well, and you also get things like uh, Bethel Night One Set One, which is an entirely 1.0. They don't play any new songs right. in that set. It is, uh, you know, material from uh you know 2000 or before uh, both originals and covers that have been in their repertoire since uh, before they took their first hiatus incredible and you know that's that's special and then you get the, you know as we've talked about the the new songs that get jammed out and things like that there totally. are these sort of uh different ways of giving each show uh something that is authentically them and also uh the the kind of risk you know what wh what about it's going to be sort of new and uh you know make it stand out uh, amongst the other shows in their summer tour and 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 beyond hey, absolutely absolutely oh my god and in the midst of all this we saw some widespread panic at the beacon theater dude absolutely i mean these shows have been rescheduled now twice they were some of the first shows that got announced uh after the uh, sort of lockdown and, and the music industry took a uh, hard stop uh, and then they were rescheduled again around the uh, Omicron breakout in New York City so it was amazing to be able to return to the beacon five <laughs> nights Isaac was at all five I was at record. all five I uh, love this band so so much <laughs> so much they're so great. I love them too. I will say it right here, right now. I, uh, I'm, I'm uh, becoming something of a spreadhead, Isaac. I'm really, really enjoying these shows. And especially, you know, for the record, everybody, Isaac knows every nuance of what's happening with both bands. Um, and me, the much more of the widespread panic noob, it's very fun for me to be able to be like, dude, what is this? What is going on? And you tell me immediately. I'm like, oh. Nice. Well, in terms of the, uh, I, I, like, I really should have kind of come up with a better way to put this, but perhaps we'll continue to talk about it on future episodes. But the sort of, it's not just a sort of consecration of a legacy, but to me, they're such a, uh, a rock band performing at such a high caliber that you don't really get to see anymore, given the vast catalog they have, given the incredible musicality and talent amongst them and their many years of performing together that even though I am so familiar with their catalog, I always walk away from a panic run with a song that, uh, you know, I might have previously ignored that really stood out to me and, and I kind of think, wow, I should go listen to other versions of that and, you know, next time it rolls around and it, it, at a show that I'm at, like, I, I'll be excited to hear it again. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sort of at that phase sure. of, of it with Panic <laughs> and, 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 you know, I know, I think uh, on Friday night the encore with uh, No Sugar Tonight and New Mother Nature, you and I were both like, oh, oh shit. Huh. There was some shit going on, dude. There's a lot of incredible stuff. To me, you know, I saw Thursday through Saturday, skipped Sunday for Hartford. That's where Isaac and I, uh, you know, lost each other for a night. It's okay. It's okay, everybody. We, we found each other the next day at <laughs> Widespread Panic. And, uh, and I would say that Thursday, you know, Every night sort of surpassed itself, which was an incredible mm -hmm. sort of feat. And then on Monday, they played, you know, we could call it an extended encore. I would call it a third set, to be quite frank. They played, you know, in the encore slot, all cover tunes, absolutely incredible. They played Fairies Wear Boots. They played Heroes by David Bowie. They played Mountain Jam, which was just a very respectful nod to the Allman Brothers legacy at the Beacon Theater, which I am partial to. <laughs> and uh, it was really, really just a beautiful night of, of, you know, I would call it three sets of music. Are people calling it that, Isaac? No. No. It's mostly considered. I mean, to have an epic encore like that, sure. I think is is a really cool thing in and of itself. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, and it and it was, and it certainly was. And man, let me tell you, when Fairies Wear Boots by Black Sabbath came, 
I think I pulled a hamstring, y'all. I ran right to the front, head right next to the sub. Things were absolutely bombastic. It was a beautiful, amazing night of music and a great way to cap it off here in New York City. Well, totally. And they opened the run with their original song, Heroes, and closed the run with a David Bowie cover of Heroes. So, um, I don't know. It was very heroic. It was. It was more than ways. heroic. You go more than it. heroic. Those guys are are heroes. <laughs> I mean, They're heroes. <laughs> holy shit! And uh, to marry the two worlds, everybody. Uh, if you haven't heard, I'm sure you have. But uh, Trey Anastasio, kind of after this leg of Fish tour, is going to perform two solo acoustic shows at the Beacon Theater on August 19th and 20th, and it is debuting. This new super crazy sound system that they are installing and leaving in the Beacon Theater. And that's going to be great. Oh my God, my alarm's going off. Can you believe that? Everybody, I'm awake. (laughs) It's only 12.44 in the afternoon. (laughs) So, you know, it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. And I love that they're just leaving the sound system. Like, you know, it's... It's funny to me that they're debuting the sound system with a solo acoustic performance because, you know... You'd imagine a little bass, some drums, maybe even some keyboards. But no, it's Trey. It's our boy Trey. It's his hometown venue. He walks down the street from his apartment. He plugs in. He plays for ravenous fans like us. Wildly delighted by this. And I think it's going to be a wonderful time. I look forward to being there and uh, marrying the two worlds of five widespread panic shows surrounded by a million fish shows. And we will look back to these nine days, I say. Be like, holy shit. Remember when this was JB and Dave Schools? Oh my God! Now it's totally. Trey. It's going to be Trey everywhere, right? That's the the thing with the sound is that it sounds. It's everywhere. It's going to be everywhere. Allegedly, like you know, they. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say it, but Johnny, my boyfriend, you know, blah blah blah, works for Bowery Presents. Somebody called him from the Beacon, explaining sort of the uh, technical elements of this. In a way that, like, you know, it wasn't the tech person explaining it, so it was sort of <laughs> crazily explained. And and but uh, you know, apparently it has like translation abilities, which is really some new shit. And he's like, wait, what? Like they're like, yeah, like it can translate what the <laughs> I don't understand. But we're gonna see what this all means <laughs> eventually. I hope that's not horrible misinformation, but I guess we'll see. Maybe Trey will be singing. In Spanish. I mean, I would love to hear that. I mean, who's to say? Anyway, good times all around. We really can't wait for all this. Isaac, tonight is Jones Beach Night 2. It caps up off our (laughs) self-proclaimed Jam Band Olympics. I'm really looking forward to it. And, uh, I mean, this has just been absolutely insane that we've gotten to do this well that's another factor right that we're still looking forward to it you'd think you'd think that we would be like uh eh, right really no but man. yeah no i'm just as excited for tonight as i was for the first show i think it's a crazy thing it's a crazy thing and for the record everybody uh isaac and i have been getting tons of kudos on the podcast at these shows and for that guys You've left us for clept. We can't even believe that you, uh, you know, we've had such nice people at the Beacon and at the Fish Shows come up to us and tell us that they love inappropriate happiness and that they listen every week. And, you know, it's always shocking to me that people listen to us shoot the shit on the couch. But guess what? We put it out there. It's and becoming less shocking. Yeah, I expect it. <laughs> you expect it. <laughs> <laughs> of course you want to hear us talk about uh, some music. We love it. We love it, baby. And we love to talk about music with you. Yeah. Too. Without so, a doubt. I know. We want to do like more of a kind of listener communication totally. dimension. We are going to... Uh, we're going to give some thoughts. We're going to give some thought to that. I think we're going to, you know, create an email that you can email us at and we can, you know get really involved deep in the cheese whiz with you the because, listener i mean to me aside from talking with you about all of this which i love to do yes it is really about promoting uh the uh joy of uh, musical discourse dude i mean you know and there's literally nothing i enjoy more and the fact that people listen to us talk about it and get excited about it and are you know rabid show goers and attenders and you know th- they think about all of this too whether on you know whatever level it doesn't matter you're going to the shows you're enjoying the shows that's to me 
keeping that spirit alive is the most important thing because I know it's done more for me than anything else in this world, you know? Totally. Likewise. So. Absolutely. Fucking A. Um, so on that note, we'd like to thank <laughs> our beautiful, talented producer, Marlo Shankweiler. Hi, Marlo. She's not here right now. It was her birthday on Monday. And she got, she got that a great birthday show. Amazing birthday show. And uh, we couldn't do this without her. We'd like to thank Brian Brickman, RJB from Osiris Media. We love you guys. Thank you for putting us on. Beautiful times. And Isaac, I mean, Jesus Christ, I don't even know where to begin, but it's been a hell of a run. <laughs> it's been a hell of a run. So much fun. Ridiculous. Ain't nobody I'd rather see a hundred nights of widespread panic with. <laughs> oh, likewise. Let's Holy do it again shit. sometime. Absolutely. And for all you out there on Fish Summer Tour, all you were at the, be- uh, at the Beacon and way beyond, as we were saying, you know, we're talking about jam bands, but we love music of all shapes and sizes, and I cannot wait to see a little Maggie Rogers tomorrow. I know, and we didn't even get to Joni Mitchell, who Dude, performed at the Newport Folk Dude, shout Festival. out to Joni. There's so much that's been going on. Springsteen sat in with bleachers at Radio City Music Hall. Unbelievable. Rapid fire. Such incredible stuff happened at Newport Folk Fest this last weekend. I mean, you can't even begin to wrap your head around the incredible summer of music that's been going on. It's not post-COVID. People are still dealing. But man, if you could look back two years ago and think that all this would be unveiling itself the way it has been. And I'm proud of the way we've embraced it and gone after it like we said we would. Because, I mean... (laughs) <laughs> Me too. It's a it's crazy, crazy, yeah. crazy thing. Um, so shout out to you, the listener, embracing the summer of music and uh, keeping the joy alive. We love you very much. Thank you for the kind words uh, in person and otherwise. And shit, have a wonderful rest of your week. And we will catch up with you next week for another episode of Inappropriate Happiness. Take care now. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Osiris.